Our next topic is cataracts. You have just experienced in rapid motion what the person with cataracts experiences over a period of years. What causes this change in visual acuity? Seated just behind the pupil, the lens of the eye accommodates to allow the eye to focus. The crystal clear lens permits light to pass through so that distinct images can register on the retina. If the lens becomes cloudy for any reason, the person's vision will be blurry. A cataract is an opacity of the lens of the eye. It is commonly considered part of the aging process, but can also be congenital, or result from trauma or exposure to toxins, including corticosteroids, phenothiazine derivatives, and myotic agents. Loss of water and crystal formation create the opacities that can involve all or part of the lens. With age-related cataracts, both eyes are usually affected. However, they may progress at different rates. Risk factors for cataracts include aging, eye trauma, and exposure to sunlight and to some drugs. Also, people who have diabetes mellitus, hypoparathyroidism or Down syndrome are at increased risk. Some cataracts could be prevented by protecting the eyes from trauma and sun exposure. Protective eyewear should include UV light filtering. What are the signs and symptoms of cataracts? Blurred vision and changes in color perception are the first symptoms of cataracts. Blurring typically worsens, gradually allowing for a certain amount of adaptation. Some people have diplopia, that's double vision. Clients might not report symptoms until they have difficulty performing some activities. Cataracts are normally painless. Opaque areas can be seen with an ophthalmoscope. A very advanced cataract causes the lens to appear white and blocks the passage of light through the pupil, so the fundus cannot be visualized. Diagnosing a cataract is based on the history and physical examination, and the only cure for cataracts is surgical extraction of the lens, usually done on an outpatient basis. Two procedures are widely used. Intracapsular cataract extraction where both the lens and the entire capsule are removed and extracapsular cataract extraction which removes the lens but leaves the posterior lens capsule in place. Advantages of that second procedure are a reduced risk of subsequent retinal detachment and an adequate support structure for an intraocular lens implant. Without a lens, that's called a fakia, the eye loses accommodation and refraction of light. A plastic replacement lens commonly is implanted following cataract extraction. Remarkable advances in artificial lenses permit excellent vision postoperatively. Clients might need eyeglasses or contact lens only for some activities. Because cataract extraction is usually done in outpatient settings, client teaching must be done in advance. The client must have someone to take him home from the extraction procedure. If the client lives alone, home health nursing should be arranged to assure proper self-care and to evaluate progress. Preoperative medications for cataract extraction typically include a sedative for relaxation, oral acetazolamide, trade name Diamox, to reduce intraocular pressure, or IOP, sympathomimetic eye drops to dilate the pupil and constrict blood vessels, and cyclopegic eye drops to prevent lens movement. Ophthalmic drugs are instilled into the lower conjunctival sac without touching the medication container to the eye or to the sac. When giving ophthalmic drugs that have systemic effects, apply pressure to the inner canthus after instilling drops to reduce systemic absorption. Midazolam, trade name Versed, may be given to induce conscious sedation while a local anesthetic is injected behind the eye. Post-operative nursing diagnoses include risk for infection, risk for injury, and deficient knowledge. Post-operative medications include antibiotic eye drops or ointment to prevent infection, corticosteroid eye drops to reduce inflammation, antiemetics to prevent vomiting, acetaminophen for mild pain, and stool softeners to prevent constipation and thus eye strain. Although the incision in the eye is very small, it presents a portal for infection. Use good hand washing when changing dressings and instilling drops. A white crusty drainage on the eyelids is normal, but any other drainage should be reported to the surgeon. 
Advise the client to avoid touching the eye. The client may have a patch and shield to prevent accidental rubbing of the eye, especially during sleep. Other than mild itching or slight discomfort, only mild pain is expected. Notify the surgeon of any pain because it might indicate bleeding or increased intraocular pressure. To prevent increased IOP, postoperatively position the client in semi fowlers or on the uninfected side. Here's a short eye exam. Antiemetics should be given promptly if the client becomes nauseated because A. Vomiting increases IOP B. The client is at risk for dehydration C. Nausea enhances pain or D. Vomiting will delay discharge The answer is A. Vomiting increases IOP which could rupture the tiny sutures in the cornea. Anything that increases IOP is contraindicated until the eye is healed. Therefore, advise the client to avoid the following activities until cleared by the surgeon. Bending over, sneezing, coughing, blowing the nose, or straining to have a bowel movement, and sexual intercourse before discharge. Be certain that the client or caregiver understands the need for prescribed eye drops and can correctly instill them. Most clients have uneventful recoveries from cataract extraction. Go home the same day and marvel at the dramatic improvement in their vision.